Graydon Carter elegantly asserts, Glamour is a valuable element, an integral part of life. The scene at Hotel du Cap Eden Rock in Antibes, where Carter is preparing to host his can party, exemplifies the abundance of this essence. Carter, clad in a bespoke blue linen jacket, Gucci slippers, and white trousers, embodies the contentment of a 73-year-old connoisseur of life's pleasures. His once lush gray mane now teeters on the brink of vanishing. Superyachts confidently grace the sparkling Mediterranean behind him, while helicopters hum overhead. Men and women buzz with purpose, earpieces in place. In the distance, a guitarist sound checks. Tomorrow, a multitude of elegantly attired guests will descend upon this venue. Carter is no stranger to revelries. Throughout his 25-year tenure as Vanity Fair's editor, he turned the magazine's annual Oscars party into the most renowned event of the night, surpassing even the awards in Allure. He also played host at Cannes every year, and the current event is a successor to those glamorous affairs. Co-hosted by David Zoslav, CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, the soiree marks Warner Brothers centenary under the banner of Carter's new venture, Air Mail, an online magazine. Reflecting on his experiences, Carter remarks, The Oscars party grew excessively grand, overshadowing the essence of the event. The can gathering, on the other hand, was always more relaxed and enjoyable. A subtle rivalry lingers, as Vanity Fair recently held its own event at the same hotel, which fell short of expectations. Carter returns as the master of festivities, ready to show them how it's done. I have a knack for this, he concedes. Thorough preparation is key. The selection of guests is as crucial as excluding certain individuals. A hundred exceptional attendees can be overshadowed by one undesirable presence. Care must be taken to avoid seating couples together if there has been previous romantic entanglements. In Europe, it is vital to address everyone using their appropriate titles. Hosting hosts near the entrance reduces guests' anxiety. Alcohol also helps set the mood. The peculiar incidents that have unfolded over the years hold paramount importance in this narrative. Instances such as Isabel Huppert's fainting episode, which gave rise to rumors of her potential demise, Jean-Claude Van Damme's comical entrapment in a bathroom, and Philip Seymour Hoffman's audacious leap off a cannonball, drenching everyone by the poolside, stand out as the defining elements. Despite taking a beta blocker to alleviate anxiety before attending a party, Carter still experiences nervousness, driven by his desire for everyone to have an enjoyable time. Parties hold a special place in Carter's heart, just as magazines do. Prior to descending into the festivity, he relies on a beta blocker to calm his nerves. Born in 1949 in Ontario, Canada, Carter made the decision to leave university and dedicate himself to the world of magazines. His journey led him to New York, where he joined Time magazine and became part of a remarkable cohort of young journalists. It was during this time that he crossed paths with Kurt Anderson, the founder of the satirical publication Spy, which ingeniously satirized the burgeoning New York elite of the 1980s. One particularly memorable feature involved sending checks worth 64 cents to numerous millionaires, gauging their willingness to cash them. Donald Trump, one of the select few, did indeed cash the final check. Carter emerged as an early adversary of Trump, spending three weeks in his company for a magazine profile in 1983. The text discusses two important details, the acquisition of Spy magazine by investors in 1991 and Graydon Carter being headhunted by C. Newhouse, the billionaire owner of Condé Nast, to assume control of Vanity Fair. Carter emerged as a prominent figure in American magazine journalism during the 1990s, and had the ability to recruit top-notch talent. His relationship with Anna Wintour, who eventually treated him with competitive disdain, further underlines his stature. During Carter's tenure, Vanity Fair captivated readers with its glossy blend of investigative journalism, Hollywood coverage, and witty humor, consistently breaking groundbreaking stories. Carter's latest endeavor, Air Mail, operates exclusively online and boasts a predominantly millennial staff. Carter envisions a three-year trajectory towards profitability. He holds a deep fascination for British politics and indulges in podcasts like The Rest is Politics and The Rest is History. During the lockdown, Carter embarked on writing his memoir with the assistance of British journalist James Fox, renowned for his work on Keith Richards' memoir, Life. Reflecting on his own life, Carter acknowledges that Keith's experiences far surpass his own in excitement. 
Initially doubtful that anyone would care about the memoir of an upper middle aged white male, Carter credits James for organizing the narrative. Rather than settling scores, the memoir will contain embarrassing, humorous, universal, and illuminating stories. Carter believes that life is comprised of a series of minor failures, and the key is to keep them insignificant. As for settling scores with Toby Young, the British journalist who worked as a contributing editor for Vanity Fair in the 1990s and later wrote the book How to Lose Friends and Alienate People, which was adapted into a film starring Simon Pegg as Young and Jeff Bridges as Carter, Carter does not intend to engage in such behavior. The book did not paint a flattering picture of their dynamic. The importance of this text lies in the contrasting moments that reveal great in Carter's character. Despite his affable demeanor, there is a steely edge to him that should not be underestimated. He believes that no good deed goes unnoticed, but also admits that he has been betrayed by someone he once offered a job to, highlighting his wariness and the consequences of crossing him. While his book is nearing completion, there's a party that demands his attention. As we bid farewell, Carter's attention is drawn to two blonde women who have taken a seat at a corner table. In jest, he declares that one of them will be his next wife, much to the amusement of his assistant and in close proximity to his actual wife, Anna. The playful banter continues as he quips that he has his eyes on both women. Returning to the hotel the next evening at 10 p.m., I find heightened security with guards lining the path leading to the restaurant. Classic Warner Brothers films are projected onto the surface of the swimming pool, creating an ethereal ambiance. Plastic glasses are filled with Dom Perignon since glass is prohibited near the pool area. A DJ provides the music, but most guests are too engrossed in observing rather than dancing. A parade of renowned personalities grace the event, including Leonardo DiCaprio accompanied by the diminutive Martin Scorsese, followed by Robert De Niro, Jason Statham, and Rosie Huntington-Whiteley. Each guest is escorted to a raised sofa, highlighting the enduring presence of hierarchy. Notably absent from the elevated area are Boy George, Sting, Scarlett Johansson, and Rebel Wilson. Lily Rose Depp, the daughter of Johnny Depp and Vanessa Parody, quietly occupies a bench. Carter's co-host, David Zoslov, has a near mishap on a step, causing a momentary stir. Carter, donning a white jacket, exudes a patrician elegance as he oversees the event, warmly greeting and welcoming attendees. At one point, he stands apart from the festivities, surveying the various groups with approving eyes. With an exhausted smile, Carter remarks that he can finally relax, acknowledging the hard work that goes into orchestrating such a memorable affair. Thank you for watching today's video. To stay up to date with all my future videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. If you found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.